Today, we will make a voxel engine using ChatGPT. Now, I've been making a voxel game for longer than a year now using the Rust programming language and the Bebe game engine. And my question is, is ChatGPT here to steal my job? Will it nullify all the work I've done up until now? Let's find out. Make me a unique, amazing voxel game. Don't bother showing me the code, just make me the game. Compile it and send me the exe file. Thank you, love, 1010. Let's get those sausages out now. Okay, this is actually how it's going to work. A voxel engine has a lot of moving parts. First, there's the voxel data creation, the mesh generation, and managing, unloading, and loading actual chunks. And not only that, you can make a voxel engine the easy way or the hard way. You probably want multi-threading, which is a huge topic in itself. And there are many ways you can write the meshing algorithm. There are actually four different ways. The stupid way, the culling way, the greedy meshing way, and the optimized meshing way. Because all all of these parts in themselves are really large. I don't expect ChatGPT to compile all of these different things together. So what I'm gonna have to do is ask for specific code pieces. Hopefully I can take the code and then patch it together. All right, let's make a new Rust project and then I'm gonna include the Bevy game engine to make my life a little bit easier. Write me a 3D Hello World program for Rust using the Bevy game engine. Huh? To display a 3D cube, perfect. It actually knows how to write Bevy code, so that's a good sign. Let's copy that. Go into our main file. Will this compile? But while it's building, we might as well uh, ask for some more code. Give me a hash map with the chunk position as key and the value is a collection of voxel data. We got exactly what we needed. And ChatGPT managed to figure out, probably because I said chunk, that I want to use integers as positions. It did, however, put it into a tuple, which is fine, but I would prefer to use Bevy's IVEC3 data type. Don't use a tuple, use an IVEC3, please. Awesome, it changed the data type. Except for some reason, ChatGPT decided to change how we store our voxel data. Previously, we had a vector of voxels, and now all of a sudden, we've wrapped the vector of voxels into a chunk struct. This random change of data types will unfortunately become a reoccurring pain in my brain. Data representation done, let's generate some voxels. Make me a function to generate some chunk voxel data. We will have a 32 by 32 by 32 voxels per chunk. Whoopsie, the voxel data doesn't actually represent anything, so add a is solid boolean to the voxel struct. Is solid will be set with the noise function. Wait, Bevy has pearly noise? I didn't even know that. Oh, it's solid. Okay, generate voxel data. I don't care about this. Show me the voxel data. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay? What? This is amazing. From what I've heard, ChatGPT is trained on data that is like a year old or something. So what we are seeing here is actually old Bevy code. We don't need to call system. You had to do this previously in Bevy, but not now. So let's see if it compiles now. There's no such function. New, maybe? This should not be a reference to commands. Cannot borrow commands because it's not mutable. Uh, and it compiles. Amazing. We have a black screen, uh, cause we don't have a camera, oh my. Let's just go ahead and 3D scene example. Add a camera, add a light. Okay, here we go. Amazing. Let's add all of this amazing voxel code. Generate voxel data. Here's our voxel definitions. Right, Bevy does not have a noise include. Don't use Bevy's noise library, <clears throat> which doesn't exist, and use bracket noise instead. Oh, splendid. That is... <laughs> because we can't render the voxels yet, I decided to debug the voxel data by printing out the state of the voxels. We should see a variety of voxels where is solid is both true and false, but for some reason, all of them were false. I tweaked around with the frequency of the noise, and now we have some data that looks good. Now we are ready to render our voxel data. 
Make me a function that takes a chunk map and generates a mesh. The return value should be a vector of vertices and indices. It was cool to see that ChatGPT remembered that we are dealing with 32 by 32 chunks. This code iterates all the voxel data. It even knows how to convert the XYZ positions to an index. And if a block is solid, a cube mesh will be appended to the vertices vector. Now I didn't get all the code I asked for, it stopped in the middle of writing it out. Uh, you seem to have stopped before showing me all the code, can you continue please? I got the code, copy pasta, here we go. We have mesh generation code, so now all we need to do is puzzle these pieces together, generate the mesh, insert the vertices, replace the old cube with this newly created mesh. Will this actually work? I represent to you the voxel mesh. That does not look correct and we can't see everything. We need a camera controller. Write Rust code for a fly camera bevy plugin. Looking good, speed, sensitivity. Wait. What? Why do we have two queries? <laughs> okay, we get some move direction. This is nonsensical code. I had to manually fix some code errors, but we got a fly camera. Let's see if it works. Oh, look, we got a camera, but it it's... Uh, oh, this camera is so bad. Shit, GPT. This fly camera was so garbage that I eventually imported some code from my other voxel project because it has a fly camera that works perfectly fine. Y position is one, that's good. Bottom face, zero. Left face, zero. Right face, it looks correct. It must be something wrong with, with the cube indices. The cube indices does not look correct. Why? The issue is with the winding order of the vertices in each face. Figured out exactly what is wrong. It probably generated the indices in the wrong order. Okay, let's try this out. Yeah, it, it's still wrong. Remake the generate cube vertices function where the winding order is counterclockwise. Oh no, it, it changed the <laughs> function input. Uh, it, here it's sending in the VEC3. And now it does this pain in my brain. We make the generate cube indices function with the counterclockwise winding order. Don't you dare change the input. Start index, vertex offset. Okay, it just became dumber. This is beautiful Rust code. We make a vector and then we remap all of the values by adding the start index. So we don't need to add the offset every single place. Please write better Rust code. You're right, using map is a cleaner way to add vertex offsets to each index. Here's an updated version. Why does it store the same value? All right, thank you. Let's see if the indices are correct. Of course it's not. Uh, yeah, I, I had to take the matter into my own hands because the vertices and indices were complete bogus. bogus. I had to draw a cube, write out the index numbers and figure out all the numbers by myself. This took me like 10 minutes. Not a lot of fun. Thank you, ChatGPT. The mesh is now correct, but you might have noticed that the rendering looks super weird and that is completely my fault. I forgot to add normals to the mesh, which made the lighting calculations completely messed up. I added a normal to all vertices, but I made them all point in the same direction, which is why it still looks a little bit weird. Mesh generation done. If you remember, this is the first method I mentioned. The stupid way, the cooling way, yeah, this is the stupid way. Spawning cubes everywhere is very bad for performance, so next I wanted to see if I could implement the second method, which can massively reduce the mesh data, the cooling method. This is actually the same method I used for my voxel game. I don't even have greedy meshing, it's performant enough, but I'm gonna explore that in the future, anyway. Now this method increases the mesh generation code complexity by a lot. We now need to sample adjacent voxels and if we're at the edge of a chunk we'll need to find the adjacent chunk voxel data. The algorithm is not that easy to explain either so I will not even attempt that. Sorry. Now it quickly became obvious that implementing this method with ChatGPT would not be a fun experience. Especially considering working with large amount of code, ChatGPT would randomly change data types and many times it would get important details wrong. Unfortunately, we are going to have to stick with this stupid method. I wanted to integrate Bevis PBR shader to make it look nice and pretty. ChatGPT could actually give us WGSL shader code which was cool, but once again this is old WGSL code. I asked it to update the synth 
contacts, which actually worked, but in the end I had to manually implement Bevy's PBR shader because integrating shader code like this was not a thing in Bevy previously. Now it actually looks decent. Look on our little chunk go. Amazing. There's only two things left to do. Number one, subscribe to 1010. Number two, let's make the world infinite by loading and unloading chunks. Write some Rust code whose purpose is to signal when a chunk needs to be loaded or unloaded. For a book to learn. Chunks are loaded when in range of a certain player position. The code was actually pretty decent, but of course I had to do some minor tweaks here and there. I then integrated this chunk loading code into the Bevy Entity Component System, and it actually worked the first time I tried it. But of course, we get a massive frame rate drop when the mesh is created. Of course, loading 9 chunks the same frame without multi threading, yeah, that's going to lag. This is the final result. I would call this the humble beginnings of a voxel engine. Nothing mind blowing, but pretty cool nonetheless. I could obviously improve this a lot, but what would be the point considering I'm already making a voxel game that is miles ahead in its development. I have plenty of videos on this project. Hey, why don't you check it out? I believe utilizing ChatGPT to further improve this voxel engine would be pretty hard. I mean, of course I can ask it for guidance on how to implement multi threading, but there's no way ChatGPT is going to take all my code and implement multi threading, just like that. Working with large amount of code with ChatGPT is not a good experience at the moment. Sometimes it gets details wrong, sometimes it changes the data structure or change name of variables. The biggest value of ChatGPT at the moment seems to be asking for guidance in specific topics. For example, I asked it how do you optimize the voxel engine with Rust. It gives some good ideas and even things I've never heard about, like store data in a way that minimizes cache misses, such as using a Morton ordering for the voxel grid. I've never heard of that. That might be relevant to my current project. I had to ask. How does Morton ordering optimize cache misses for voxel grid? This method provides a way to reduce cache misses by ensuring that data points that are close in multidimensional space are also close in the linear array. Okay, that sounds cool. Oh, look at that. Here's an article talking about Morton ordering for chunk voxel data. Isn't that amazing? A quick question to ChatGPT, and I've learned of a method that might improve performance. That's where I'm gonna end this video. But to wrap it up, I'm gonna need the help of ChatGPT. Make a short wrap for a video outro that is about why they should subscribe to my channel where I talk about Rust programming and voxel engines. Yo, it's time to wrap it up, but before you go, let me speak up. If Rust programming and voxels are your thing, then subscribe to my channel will make your heart sing. I will take you on the journey through code where Rust is the star where voxels explode. So don't be shy, hit that subscribe button now. You're not community with all this fun in. Uh, weird lyrics, but okay.